Stress versus Strain Curve. In this video, we will see the stress versus strain curve for a tensile material. Let us first understand, what is stress? When a force acts on a body, this force tries to change the shape of the body, but the internal molecules resist this change. This resistance developed inside a body due to this applied force is called stress. And is given by this equation. That is, stress equals force divided by the area on which that force is acting. In other words, stress is the ratio of force to the area on which that force is acting. And, what is a strain? Consider a spring fixed on one end and having length, L. When we apply a force F on the other end of the spring, its length changes, we will denote this elongation of spring as delta L. The stain underwent by this spring is given by this equation. That is, strain equals the elongation of the spring due to the application of force F, divided by the original length of the spring. We can also say, strain is the ratio of change in length to the original length, and it is denoted by epsilon. As we understood, what are stress and strain mean, and how to calculate them? Now we can understand the stress versus strain curve easily. This graph shows the stress versus strain curve for a tensile material. On the y-axis, we have plotted stress, and on the x-axis, we have strain. To understand this we will take a tensile material. When we load this material that means we are applying force on it. When applying a force it undergoes elongation. In other words, we can say when we apply stress on this spring, it undergoes strain. Now we plot these stress strain values on y and x axis. As we increase stress, the body undergoes strain. If we further increase the stress, the body undergoes more strain. If we remove stress acting on the body, it regains its original shape. Again if we apply stress on a body, it undergoes strain. It happens only up to a certain point. And this point is called the proportionality point. It is the region in which the materials obeys Hooke's law. That is, the stress applied on the body is directly proportional to the strain undergone by the body. Here, stress is proportional to strain. Stress is represented by sigma and strain by epsilon. And the proportionality constant here is capital E. Capital E is Young's modulus or modulus of elasticity, and its unit is Newton per millimeter square. If we remove stress at this point, the body comes back to its original shape. It means this region is an elastic region of the body. Within this region, 0 to A, a body behaves like an elastic. Next, if we further increase the stress acting on the body, the strain also increases but not proportionally. Here, the relationship between stress and strain at the curve A to B is nonlinear. The region between A to B is also called the elastic region. This point, B, is called elastic limit, and the corresponding stress is called yield strength and is denoted by, SY. If we remove the stress acting on the body at this point, the body regains its original position. If we further increase the load or the stress, the strain increases rapidly, even for a small change in stress. And this curve is represented by BE. If we remove a load in between this region, suppose at point, C, the body does not regain its original shape and size. In this case, even if the stress value is zero, the body will remain deformed, or the strain value will remain the same. Here, the material will have a permanent deformation. This deformation is called plastic deformation, and this region is called a plastic region. The point E is called the yield point, and the stress corresponding to this point is called ultimate tensile strength, and is denoted by SU. Beyond this point, the material will undergo additional strain even after reducing the stress, and fracture occurs at point F. This point F is called the breaking point. This point where there is lower stress but high strain is called the lower yield point and is represented by D. The stress strain curve varies from material to material. Brittle materials have these yield, ultimate strength, and breaking point very close to each other. I hope you have understood the stress versus strain curve, and thank you for being a member and supporting my work, because of your support I'm able to continue creating these videos.